A very warm welcome to all participants who are present at the 21st edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit. For this session on our fragile planet, we have Sadhguruji with us. He needs no introduction for his far and wide civil society engagements. He has been actively engaged in the collective efforts for ensuring a better environment for all. Namaskaram Sadhguruji. Namaskaram uh, Vibhaji. Namaskaram. Pleasure to be talking to you. Namaskaram. Thank you. We welcome you here on behalf of all the participants in this edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit. We are pleased to have you with us for this session. To begin with, let me ask you, at Glasgow, our Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji stressed sustainable lifestyle, and I quote him, life, L-I-F-E, which means lifestyle for environment. How do you suggest we make today's Insta generation understand this, and especially when we are moving towards consumerism? <laughs> Uh, they call themselves uh, Generation Z. So when you call something Z, it means it's a lost generation, it's a very bad thing to do. <laughs> so, Generation X, Generation Y, now it's Generation Z. This is a bad way to go, this is not the last generation, we don't want this to be the last generation. That is a blunder we have committed on… In, on many levels. About how to touch the youth, well, as part of this Conscious Planet movement, uh, Save Soil movement that we have started now, uh, for which uh, <laughs> I'm… Uh, one thing is I brought in a motorcycle mainly for the youth. Uh, I'm a lone motorcyclist riding 30,000 kilometers across 27 nations uh, in hundred days' time. So this is to inspire the youth. And as a part of this, we are also bringing together a large number of musicians who are making variety of music about soil, about saving the planet, about saving the soil, and about uh, being conscious how unconscious human behavior has led to this. Only way to reverse that is it conscious behavior. So we are using music as a very big tool to touch the youth because music has the power to touch the youth. Uh, you see today all the young people have earplugs in their uh, <laughs> ears all the time because they don't want to listen to the parents or teachers or anybody, they want to listen to the musicians, whatever they are saying is the uh, scripture right now. So, we have to approach every generation as it works. Right now, I feel music is a massive uh, influencer uh, for the young generation, whether you want to call them Insta generation or generation X, generation Y, whatever they are, but they are… they are next generation to us and that is important the next generation to us, in some way, in whatever little ways, they must be one step better than us, not worse than us. That is a commitment all of us should have. The generation that comes after us must always be one step better than us on all levels, otherwise we have failed as a generation. So, we are using music as a powerful means to touch the new generation. I see music and motorcycles somehow excite the young generation, so I am using both. <laughs> Sadhguruji, you rightly mentioned about this generation and one will have to change the mode of communicating to them. And there have been several attempts to build global solidarity at the civil society level to combat climate change and protect our planet. What, according to you, can be significantly effective, especially with respect to soil health? Actually, uh, turning around the soil health is not as complex as people think it is. It can be easily done. See, for example, I'm setting up uh, fields like this, we've already done it, uh, with 125,000 farmers that we have converted them into tree-based agriculture or no-till kind of agriculture, where without the plough you can grow, it grows much better, much more. Their incomes have gone up anywhere between 300 to 800 percent in seven, five to seven years' time. The soil nourishment, you know, the soil organic content has gone up. The nutrition value in the food has gone up. The market value of the products have gone up. 
and above all, the water tables have come up. All this happening effortlessly, simply all you have to do is get enough um, organic content into the soil. How do you get organic content into the soil? One way is to grow trees and smartly uh, prune them whenever you have to and, uh, you know, pulverize them and put it back into the soil. This is one way of doing. Otherwise, I'm just saying, see, in a country like India, where there is sunlight for twelve months of the year, you can grow four to five maize crops. When the maize comes up about uh, five to six feet, you can chop them up and put it back into the land. We, along with that, if you do mixture of legumes, pulses and everything, believe me, in twelve months' time, the organic content in the soil will go up anywhere between one to three percent in one year. In one year, you can reverse the desertification. But how do we do this? Because there is a productive land. So let us say I have ten acres. If the government gives subsidy for me for five acres, just one year, that I will not grow, yield any crop from it, I will just put the organic content back into the soil and create humus for five acres of my land. And you paid whatever I was earning from that five acres, you pay that money to me, I will do that. Next year you give me for the other five acres, ten acres is fully nourished, up to three percent organic content can be done in one acre. If you do it very, uh, you know, proactively, if you don't do it that proactively, in, in a matter of three to four years, very effortlessly this can be done. It is not difficult. See, what the land needs is just this. The very way life has happened on this planet is, for example, today in the atmosphere, everybody is talking about carbon dioxide. Oxygen is not a popular thing to talk about, but let me talk about oxygen <laughs> because it's life nourishing for us. There is approximately twenty-one percent oxygen in the present day atmosphere. Uh, probably a billion years ago, it was less than two percent. So that means it was completely inhospitable for life. Only microbial life existed. So this microbial life which, uh, you know, progressed itself into algae, fungi and all kinds of things, for the first time they started what is called as photosynthesis. This is a magical process powered by a, a limitless or a seamless amount of energy always coming to the earth all the time, using the sun's rays and sun's light and sun's heat that with the… the using the photo of the sun, we started synthesizing that and energy started developing out of that. All these millions of life forms have evolved out of it. Right now, you and maybe me they are human beings. We don't have green leaves on our heads and we are not doing photosynthesis. But we are a consequence of photosynthesis. Only because that phenomena is on, we are here. That is why every life is here. So one thing that needs to happen is all agricultural lands, which account for nearly seventy percent of the land on the planet, and eighty-four percent of India's land is under the plough. If you ensure twelve months of the year there is some photosynthesis happening on the land, it is not open to sunlight, the bioactivity will pick up in a phenomenal way Within three to four years, maximum six to eight years, you will have the needed carbon content in the soil. Most of the lands can be operated without fertilizer or with very minimal usage of fertilizer and above all without irrigation. The damage we have done to the planet trying to irrigate the lands which are barren has taken a huge toll on every other life on this planet including ours, but if you have let us say twelve percent carbon content in your soil, you will not need any irrigation because if one rain comes, it will stay for months on end. It will stay in terms of moisture and that's what the plant needs. Plant does not need standing water. Plant just needs bioactivity because a plant, most people are unaware of this unfortunately, uh, not for you Vibhaji, I'm saying for the audience, whoever they are, that a plant cannot, just like a, our own uh, gut biome, without the bioactivity in our gut, we cannot absorb all the food that we eat. Similarly, a plant cannot get the necessary nutrient from the soil unless this biological activity, this eco-biology is on. So that is what has to come back. And the soil being alive is the most important thing because the strength of the soil will determine the strength of the life that we are and every other life. You can clearly see this in the case of a plant life. If the soil is weak, the plant is weak. If the plant is weak, what makes you think that you have not we become weaker? 
definitely we become weaker. One great example is right now the pandemic spreading across the world. And among all the countries, in Africa that many people did not die, only some thirty-four percent have been vaccinated, but still they did not die in that number. Even in India, uh, you know, right now we which unfortunately we've reached half a million mark, but United States is reaching towards one million mark, close up, close to that number right now. Why is this? Because ninety percent of U.S. population has vitamin E deficiency, forty-three percent has vitamin A deficiency, over forty-seven percent have calcium deficiencies. Any doctor, rudimentary doctor knows with these deficiencies, you become more susceptible to upper respiratory tract infections. And this is essentially that, maybe a more virulent one than the regular ones, but this many people need not have died. If our soil was rich, if the soil was rich with bioactivity, this kind of pandemic would not have happened. Yes, maybe it would have taken some toll, but not the kind of toll that it has taken right now. So this is just one example. On all levels, as life we are becoming weaker, as soil becomes weaker, we become weaker. We have reached a point where most agricultural soils on the planet are inching towards just about one percent. In India, sixty-two percent of the soil has less than zero-five percent. But the world soil, including all the rich soils, if you take average, is just about one-point-two to one-point-three percent. In a temperate climate, if it touches any point below one percentage of organic content, in temperate climates that is considered as desertification. Most of the southern Europe is there, half of America, United States of America is there, large parts of Africa is already there, India is, you know, very quickly going in that direction. So if we don't attend to it now, it'll be too late later on, but uh, we can do this in the next eight to twelve years time or maximum fifteen years time, we can turn this around. If there is policy, right now the Save Soil movement is to bring about this policy change in one hundred and ninety-two countries that minimum three to six percent organic content must be there. Like in a city there is a rule, how much… Uh, how much of a building you can build in a given site, there is a rule, it's no more your choice, it is by rule. Similarly, if you own agriculture land, minimum three to six, six percent organic content has to be there. The, otherwise, one year you have to go without a crop and enrich that with uh, crop covers which will enrich the soil. It is not some rocket science, this is something that we have done for thousands of years, suddenly forgotten for last fifty, forty to fifty years. It can be brought back, people have to be nudged a little bit, initially it can be recommendations, it can be incentives. At some point, if people don't change, it has to become mandatory. Thank you so much for reminding us that soil is not something which doesn't have life. And the life in the soil is as important as what it's for us. So that's a very good reminder and you also reminded us of photosynthesis. And really speaking, all energy on this planet is coming from photosynthesis. The fossilized product is petroleum. So why not to use this unique energy which is available everywhere to all of us free of cost. So that's what we have to move towards. Now let me, because you have really shown us the integrated approach which is linked to soil health, which will and should contribute significantly to climate and planetary resilience. Increasing soil organic content uh, organic carbon is a way to mitigate climate change and also ensure food security, right? And it has been done in our country for years. Conservation agriculture is not something new, we have forgotten. Mm -hmm. And somewhere okay. perhaps also because of mechanization, it became simpler and therefore people move towards it. And now we also have machines that you can still practice conservation agriculture uh, with happy cedar and so on. But in your uh, opinion, how do you see the significance of soil regeneration for addressing climate change? Are there any best practices that you'd like to share with the viewers? See, uh, the safe level of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere is supposed to be 350 uh, ppm, but the currently it is 410 ppm. 
There have been studies in various universities which show, some studies are showing, an acre of uh, a hectare of land can sequester about thirty-seven tons of uh, CO2 per year. Sure. So even if thirty-seven tons, some people are saying it's too much, even if it's twenty-five tons per year per hectare, about fifty-one million square kilometers of land is under agriculture right now. If we make this sequester even half of that thirty-seven, your problem is over in a two to three years' time. Whatever we have emitted through carbon fuel uh, burning to fossil fuel burning in the last fifty years, you can reverse that in a matter of six to eight years or maybe max, because all of us will not act at once, different countries will act at different levels, different ways. In twelve to fifteen years' time, we can reverse the whole thing just by attending to the soil. Of course, compensating uh, with, you know, less carbon fuel, uh, you know, uh, fossil fuel burning, changing into other technologies, all these things have to happen simultaneously. But this is a major one, because forty percent of the climate change is right now because of misuse of soil. Absolutely. And we have paid a price to it already. We are talking about that more than fifty percent of the agricultural soil is degraded. Being actively engaged in research related to sustainable agriculture, I can confirm that it is still continuing. It's not the end of it. We are still continuing with those practices. Now, tell us more about Conscious Planet Movement aiming at addressing the ecological degradation of soil. What roadmap will you be following to achieve this endeavor? And how do you see this endeavor linking up to a government schemes on soil health in India? And I'll say our Honorable Prime Minister is committed to this cause and the, the soil health cards which have been issued to all the farmers. I think that's one step in that direction. So when you say roadmap, uh, it's getting me a little mixed up because uh, I'm riding from uh, London to Delhi in seventy-five days and another uh, eighteen to nineteen days to Kaveri Basin. So right now I'm busy with that roadmap, but I know what you mean <laughs> by the roadmap. So why this effort is just this. See, one thing is the soil health card has been issued. This is… Uh, we know it is very… Uh, many governments in the world, the leaders understand this and they want to do this. But the problem is, people have not spoken. See, unless people say, we are willing to go through some short-term difficulties or short-term changes in our lives for long-term well-being of our lives and the future lives on this planet, if we… if we don't state that, the democratically elected leaders, their hands are tied. They cannot do much because the resources may be in their hands, but essentially, in some way, they are supposed to manifest the will of the people. They are not supposed to do their own fancy projects. So yeah. people have to express this. Right now, Conscious Planet movement is about this. We are trying to get about three to 3.5 billion people to speak about soil for these one hundred days. You must also be part of this, uh, Vibhaji. From March yeah. 21st, one hundred days, we want the whole world to talk about soil. It's not that they must be supporting me or something, everybody talk about soil. We have some arrangement with the social media uh, giants in the world, we will aggregate all these numbers. We have UNCCD our pa as our partner, we have also signed something with the World Food Program and the scientists from FAO and other organizations are working with us. World Economic Forum is very much with us, most governments have come, come on board, uh, heads of states will be flagging off this rally because everybody understands it is there and in a democratic nation, without people actually wanting something, the leadership cannot just go about doing what… what they think is good. Even if it's the best thing to do, they cannot do it without people actually supporting that. Right now, that's what I'm trying to create, that if 3.5 billion people speak, this is sixty percent of the electorate. If sixty percent of the electorate speaks, there is no government which will ignore that in a democratically set up governments. About the soil card and soil health card, whatever, it is a good move, but the important and the one bag, uh, bad lacuna in this is, 
we are still treating soil as a bunch of chemicals. Sure. We are not treating soil as an entity, as a living entity. We are looking at it as this is so much nitrogen, so much phosphorus, so much uh, sulfur, this, that, whatever. All that is there, but the important thing is it needs to be alive. Yeah. The soil That's has to be alive. It is out of that life. We as a life is a consequence of that life. Not only today, even in the evolutionary scale of things, we have become who we are only because of the biome activity in the soil. So, keeping the soil strong is important for our lives being strong and every life being strong. One thing that human beings need to understand is this keyhole approach to everything. See, one one piece, one one piece and try to fix it, no. This life on this planet is a cycle. You can't break one part of the chain and think the other part of the chain will hold up. It is very important, the entire chain is taken care of. And this taking care of this chain, see right now, I'm sorry, you are also in a scientific community, I'm not against science in any way, I'm hundred percent with them, I'm working with them. But I'm saying the way things are published, or at least the way people understand outside is, that we are looking at one part of this and say, this is it. And now next two, three years, only that goes on. Everybody thinks nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. Somebody says something else, that goes on. This part by part looking at is causing a lot of damage. This is almost like looking at one part and saying, oh, okay, nature is right. It's not for you, me, you and me to say nature is right. We are a small consequence of nature. Putting it back into the natural process, a cycle which is so complex, which is so sophisticated, what is happening in the soil? A handful of soil has more organisms than all the human beings that have ever existed on this planet. So, what is happening in the soil is so complex a process. The so... it is a kind of a marketplace if you want to you, you put it that way. It is a million times more complex than any stock market that you can think of. That's how complex exchange is happening between various lives. So this is not something that you say, okay, I got it, nature is right. Come on, before you and me came, all of them were there and they have... because of them we have come. Our very evolution is because of them. So let us understand life as a life process a cyclical process. You can't cut off one part and say, okay, let's see how it works. It's not going to work like that. This carbon cycle is life cycle. We are all carbon life. Right now, if you say carbon, it's become a bad word. It's not a bad word, we are all carbon life. It is just that anything in excess is a problem. Very true. Thank you. In fact, you reminded us the importance that we have to look for holistic solutions. And like in a way, when we are kids, we are taught about various cycles, that how one thing is going to impact the other. But as we grow, we forget that soil is a living entity. Soil microorganisms are as important as our own existence. We talk of the climate change, we say save the planet. Planet will live very well without us. It is us who have to integrate ourselves in this planet and ensure that as when you started, you said that we should, our children should be better than us. But I'll say it's equally responsible for us to leave the planet better than what we inherited. And in that direction, I should say thank you for your insightful con conversation. conversation uh, and we are very pleased at Terry to have you with us in this conversation. And I'm sure all those who are attending this summit from India, from overseas, age groups of all kinds, they all must have been blessed with the insightful experiences that you shared with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaskaram. Thank you. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, Vibhaji. Let us all strive to save soil. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. And we need to understand it's not soil for our own survival. We have to save it. Thank you.